I hate to say this, but I kind of think this is my worst sketchbook. Hello friends. Today I'm going to walk you through my sketchbook. I'm going to show you everything I did in the most recently completed sketchbook and how I feel about those now. If you don't know me, I'm Erica. I'm a South Texas artist and educator. I make videos about art making and running a small business as an artist and learning about art through my art practice. So today we're going to be looking through my sketchbook. This is a Talons art creation sketchbook. I've been using this one since I want to say about September of last year. And then I finished it in January. So I've been in another sketchbook until then. But these pages, I drew some patterns so that I can play with color combinations. So I just played with my markers and I colored in different areas here to see how the colors work together. I like to see them as a whole right here like this, these three colors together. But I also like to see how they work together with a, a number of different colors. This was from September 1st. And I was drawing with my patrons. And so we did a whole kind of farmy. I think we did a farmy theme or like a cottage theme. And we were drawing hens. So I drew some eggs and some little chickens. And I think with this one, there was a really cool exercise that I did one time with um, Terry Runyon. I think it was like at sketchbook party or something. It was like a virtual workshop, I guess, art workshop. And she said something along the lines of like, if you just make like a gestural mark and like with, with color or paint, then you could turn anything into a cat. So these kind of remind me of that because I think I was just doing some gestural marks with um, the marker, a water-based marker. And then I used color pencil to create the details that turn these into like some sort of chickeny looking shape. So these were all hens. And I think that's a rooster and that's a rooster. This one came like a while after I, we had a discussion about this on, I think on my Instagram about whether you are the kind of artist who works consecutively like page by page in order in your sketchbook or do you bounce around? And this sketchbook is a really good example of me bouncing around all over the place. So now we jump all the way to January and you're going to see that I think this was like a blank page that I left. So then I came back to it. I just looked for my blank pages and came back. So in January, I was kind of preparing for some stuff that I was going to do for February on Patreon. So I made all of these little sketches. I was looking, I turned this one into a sticker. Let's do a little, a little video of that. So that is the beginning and then it turned into this. You can see it's a lot smaller than the drawing. And the colors are definitely a little different. I should put it here. Let's put it on here. Please forgive my uh, volume here. My gardener's here. He's right by my window. Okay, after much chaos, let's move on. This is the uh, media studies I was doing around, well, before October. I love that I put dates on these, like highly recommend that. I mean, if you care about the context, like I always like to know like what I was thinking about during the times when I made these things. The dates are really helpful for me because it helps me to re like, it helps me to contextualize the making. That said, um, I was doing some media studies and so I tried three different little pumpkins. I did one with watercolor or water-based markers, acrylic markers, and then gouache and colored pencil. All of them had colored pencil, but I just wanted to see how different they would look and which is your favorite. Okay, and then we did, um, I think we did a, a live stream or a club meeting and it was all about pumpkins and gourds so I practiced drawing them and um these were so much fun to draw I mean if you haven't tried drawing pumpkins and gourds especially these like knobby chunky and lumpy ones those are so fun to draw I definitely recommend you try it I think for this exercise we were exploring ways to use arbitrary color non-traditional colors for our pumpkins and gourds just to experiment a little bit about 
with color and more importantly, start to assign values to color so that that way we can figure out which color would be best suited for the shadows if I'm not using exact colors or color matching. Then around January, I guess 16th, I just flop back over here. I started a daily drawing practice in January and um, this was one of my drawings. So I would set a timer for 15 minutes and I would draw as much as I could for 15 minutes. And when the timer goes off, I could continue if I want, but I could stop if I wasn't like in the mood or didn't feel like doing it. All I had to do was commit to 15 minutes. So in January, we were just studying uh, sea life, sea creatures, fish, things like that. So this was my jellyfish drawing. And then I'm sure this went back to somewhere like September and I was again just practicing gouache and trying markers and gouache. Um, here I was doing a little bit of practice for these exercises where I was challenging my patrons to use non-traditional colors or arbitrary colors for artwork. So thinking about how we make correlations between value and color. So if this is, even though this is blue, look for a dark version and you can use it to replace the darkest greens that you could see there. So these were like the local color and arbitrary color. And this was sometime in December actually. And I was drawing some wreaths and doors. I was going to do this painting of this little toy that I have, the um, cactus plant, something like that. Grimace from um, A Happy Meal. Never finished it. I was in Round Rock for Christmas and I didn't bring a lot of materials. So I just had this like black marker and a couple of colors. And that's what I played with when I was needing to doodle. And then I had a pencil, so I used pencil, and I don't know what this was, but this was a lot of pieces of things from my surroundings. So I was staying with my brother and his family, and they have little kids, and so they had all these, like, kid toys in the yard. And so I would just kind of take pieces of them, like there's a slide, and this is something else, I don't know, castle or something. And just drawing pieces of them all together. I kind of like the way that this process works, because it's you end up with something strange at the end and I was here for that. I was playing with pencil a little bit during this time because again, I was away from home. I actually did pack a few markers, but I didn't end up using them that much. Here I was doing a few little studies with my media just to kind of see how I can use them. Especially I'm always really interested in how they look when they overlap. I saw recently that, um, Another artist, um, Dylan, and you can find her online by Dylan. She did an entire swatching of like every color marker overlapped with another marker. And this is like something that I use quite a bit in my work, like the overlapping colors to create new colors with marker. And she literally swatched them all out. And I love that. I've been, I want to do that with mine so that I can see like all of them, but I haven't done it yet but I really love the idea of swatching all of them to see every color combination possible. This was for, oh, this is from August, August 1st. I think this might've been around our creative retreat workshop. I was gonna be doing a workshop that was called Expressive Sketching. And this might have been practice for that. I don't know. Or maybe it was done after. But I used a lot of like marks. I wanted to really emphasize mark making and explore different ways that I could create textures on the surface of objects, surface textures, um, by using color pencil. And then, of course, the layered and overlapped marker. Because the Tombow dual brush pens really make super interesting textures. And I'm, I'm, always really really like excited to see these kinds of like little marks that happen when the the markers stack on top of each other and then how the pencil stacks on top of the marker just so good it, I just think it gets better with the more that you do 
This was also from the Summer Creative Retreat. This was my artwork that I did at the live workshop all about expressive sketching. And you can see this again, the experimentation of mark making, the um, speedy timers. This was a five minute drawing session. And the idea is to work fast. And so you leave some of the textures and things that you might normally spend time refining in these kinds of expressive sketching exercises. We make them fast so that we don't refine anything too much. We just really work on using the most efficient expressive marks to convey what we're trying to convey. Then again, back to my daily drawing. This was for January 31st. This was the last day of the month for drawing fish. And I was so grateful because I was sick of drawing fish by this time. Um, this was from August 22nd. So let's backtrack. This book is actually from August. Maybe we'll see something even earlier than August. But this was from a Katie Moody Patreon. It wasn't a stream. It was like um like a Zoom meeting and we all drew together. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. Um, and she had these images and we, I was using gouache and I remember doing this during my lunch break. So I didn't have a lot of time and I did, didn't get to stay for the whole thing, but I was able to do that one. And then this one as well. And she had these really complex scenes. And one of the things that I find so valuable in participating in other artists, Patreons or like their um, live drawing sessions, things like that, is that they always challenge me to do things that I wouldn't normally do on my own. This is definitely an image that I would not have chosen for myself. And I enjoy that I feel motivated and, you know, driven to try it because everyone's doing it. It's kind of like being in class. Your teacher tells you to do something and you might not want to do that on your own, but you might be surprised at the results. And the results can sometimes be really, really unexpected and uh, pleasant. I mean, a pleasant surprise. So I feel like that happened with this one. I had been wanting to really draw dense spaces because I tend to avoid those. And this was a nice challenge for that. There's another place and it's called the Room, I think it's Room Portrait Club or something like that on Instagram. And they just provide you with a photo of a room every week and then everybody draws it in their own style. And I, I just love that because again, these are subject matters I normally would avoid. So it's always a challenge for me and I feel like it helps me grow as an artist. More fish from a live stream we actually drew together and these were all time sessions. So 10 minutes, 10 minutes, 15, 10. And this is from January 6th. This one was pretty fun. I think I, I remember this one starting out so rough. And I think that that's one of the wonderful things about viewing live streams. If you're an artist or you're just beginning your art practice, because if you see finished drawings, you, they tend to feel very overwhelming or like I could never do that, especially if you're a beginner. But when you watch someone go from start to finish, you will see the ugly stages. And oftentimes we all have the ugly stages in our drawing. And sometimes people, if you're not an experienced artist, you might get discouraged at that point and you might decide to quit. But if you see another artist go through that ugly stage and then make something out of it, it might be inspiring for you to keep going. Okay, next we have this black blotch porcupine fish and again this was a 50 minute drawing this was for my daily drawing practice i really like this one it was so cute i think he's way cuter in the pictures and in my drawing but i'm really glad i drew this one because i like the spread i like how it's centered in the middle there's just it's so he's just really charming oh and this was i think this was alcohol marker yeah alcohol marker and color pencil And then this was from October. And I was trying these markers that were like watercolor brush pens. They were kind of cool, but I don't know. I didn't really care for them. Let's move on. Um, then I, this is from January 22nd. Again, back to my daily drawing practice. And this is probably one of my favorite drawings I did during that entire month of daily drawing fish. It was 15 minutes. It was the the dual brush pens, the Tombow dual brush pens. Um, and I just really like the limited color palette. I like the expressiveness of them. Just kind of seemed like little dancing shrimpies. And then this was from January 6th. So this was 
Again, part of that daily drawing practice in January, 15 minutes or less, you know, water-based marker, same thing. This is, let me get that out of the way. My daily drawing, I really don't have too much to say. More fish. This was from October. I was doing a drawing for a video. Of, I was making a reel and this was what I drew using the dual brush pens, using the Prismacolor Indigo Pencil. And this was again for my daily drawing, day 19, January 23rd, the, du the dual brush pens and my Prismacolor Pencil. I think this was um, this is up there with one of my favorites. I really like this one. It's just simple and it's cute and sweet. And I like the little figure. I don't usually draw people. So that was fun. This one's really old. This is from October. Um, and I think this is one of the first drawings. I just kind of like broke in the book with this one. But I don't really know why I was drawing this. Hmm. Daily drawing, this was day 17. This was the one that I thought was so terrible. I literally hated this drawing. Um, I think probably because it's kind of crooked. Just so much about it bothers me. Um, I also feel like this one's really old. I think this was around the same time I was drawing the gourds that I showed you earlier. And um, they were just some pumpkins. And I think I took a picture of these pumpkins when I was at the grocery store. This one is from I um Monkey Mintaka on Instagram. They were doing live drawing. I think it was live drawing or maybe it was their YouTube and they were drawing dogs and I drew the same dogs that they were drawing. And it was just such cute dog pictures. Man, like, and literally those, that dog series that she did with all the different dogs, like I think for like a month she was drawing dogs. Like literally some of my favorite drawings are so good, so cute, love them so much. Um, This was from October 20th. I was drawing masks. I think that this is one of our prompts for Patreon. It was uh, one of the weeks the prompt was mask. And so I was drawing masks and I loved drawing the masks. They were so fun. I looked for like these vintage plasticky looking masks that I remember from like my childhood. And I drew that. This was definitely a live stream, I think. And we were drawing fish, fish related imagery. This was definitely, oh, it's January 27th. Um, and I actually really like this spread. I chose select areas from an image that was mostly like boats and fishing scenes and i really like this little section here i just like the way it plays together with these images here there was a guy holding the fish there but i really just focused on the fish and then the boat scene i actually really like this one a lot and these were all short fast drawings as well this must have been december ish we were drawing fireplaces in patreon i just kind of did a little scene you know when i'm looking at the sketchbook even though i really like all the different things that i see here i kind of wish that i was one of those people who used like one sketchbook for a certain thing and then another sketchbook for another thing because it's really, you know, random and sporadic. All right, this one was also from our live stream. We did about 20 minutes on this one, and it was from the fishing scenes. And I think this was one of my favorite ones from that stream. Like, I just really liked how all of it came together. Very soft here. I think I didn't, you know, I really like the figure on this one. It feels, it doesn't feel too stiff. I always think that my figure drawings look very stiff, and I think he feels a little bit natural. So I really like this one. I like the way the birds look too. This was in December-ish. We did a stream all drawing portraits of Santa. And this was kind of like a portrait drawing exercise, but we used cartoonish and like illustration versions of Santa. So we can kind of like ease into it. We progressed onto like real photos of people dressed as Santa. And that's what we used. So it was just a portrait drawing workshop. And then I did another stream right before New Year's play with some ideas. Um, number mylar balloons which are you know challenging because of the reflections glass objects and light i think all of these were really challenging subjects to play with but i really like this spread quite a bit this was a daily drawing that one was really fun now this one was i think from that same live stream it was 15 minutes and marker and color pencil i really like this one too it just seems it's so simple these were definitely challenging for me but i'm glad i tried them and i never want to draw them again Ugh, this one especially. <laughs> I feel like I want to try again because this one looked really funny. Like to me, it doesn't quite, like I could do a little better to refine it. So I might, I might try that again someday. I don't know when. 
This one I really like, and I think this one was really popular on Instagram. I'm just gonna go through more fish. Sushi. This was really fun here because it has like they're these like fish eggs, you know, row or something, and they kind of have a transparency to them. So it was kind of hard to convey that, but I tried. You can see that little bit of light on them. And this hermit crab definitely doesn't read. I think this was more than, like, I wasn't working fast enough and I was running out of time. And yeah, it doesn't quite read to me. This one's really, I really like this one. I think it's so cute. I love the colors. He also looks like an alien. And then this oyster, I've actually drawn a lot of oysters before and they're just drawing a lot of nothing. <laughs> like you're just putting like blobs of color and hoping for the best. And I, I like how this turned out. And then we did that exercise where we were doing the translation of value from color. For this one, I used sushi for the exercises. And so we were drawing like what, what they really look like, the colors that we actually see, the local color and then swapped it out with some arbitrary color. This one too, this was just a little exercise for me. And then more sushi exercises. This one's super fun. Like I really like this because it shows like the different types of colors that we could use for it. And I mean, this one I still think is like the most clear. It comes off the, the most clearly about like, this is a, a piece of sushi or fish and rice. Um, these might be, if you didn't have that to look at, it might feel a little abstract, but. I'm into it. And then these also, the um, more exercises of fish and sushi. This one also became a sticker. And this is, is this the right one? No, this isn't even that. What a lie. Is that the right one? It is not the right one. Just kidding. More shells. And then I drew some fishing lures, which I really like these, but I don't fish. But I think if you're not a person who likes to go fishing or is into fishing, maybe these would be like too abstract. I don't know. This one was also really fun. Some wild colors on this fish. And then I was just doodling one day. I was using my acrylic markers, Tide Pod. More markers, color pencils, daily drawing in January. Literally hate this one. It is so bad. It's crooked. It's distorted. It rushed uh, i have no interest in trying it again i really like this one though this one again markers color pencil i actually really like this one i don't know why probably nobody else does but i don't care i like it this one was the worst decision i could have made it was so complicated for this amount of time a 15 minute drawing there we go and it was just too much. Like, what was I thinking? But, and it's also really abstract because of the angle. But, yeah. Day 26. And that's it for my journal. So, you can see here that I had a variety of different things in here. From August of 2023 all the way through January of 2024. And um, I really like the sketchbook. I like the paper in these books. I started a new sketchbook. I actually have another one. And this is the one that I'll show you next time. Okay. So in retrospect, I feel like even though I didn't really like this journal very much, if I look back on it, I see a lot of stuff that's just not interesting to me or not inspiring or I'm not excited by anything in there. I do think that this could still be a really valuable practice and, and really valuable to go back and reflect on. If I go back and look at my journals over the course of several months, I feel like I could learn a lot from that information. Some of the things that I learned from this is that I might want to start using imagery that is a little bit more inspiring or exciting for myself. I need to choose my imagery a little bit more carefully but also the things that I didn't enjoy I learn a lot from that too I learn about the colors and the compositions that don't work for me so even though I feel like this journal is kind of like my worst sketchbook in a while I think I can still learn quite a bit from this so I'm still really grateful for this practice and grateful for the opportunity to go back and look at my work and think about what worked and what didn't work. So if you're ever making and you just feel like you're uninspired or 
unexcited by the artwork you're making. It's okay for us to not like the things we do. And it matters most that you think about what you didn't like and then use that as data to help you move forward and maybe make you excited to make again. So I'm glad I got a chance to look back and think about the the actual like sketchbook and all of that work over the the course of four months. Overall, it's net positive, I think. It's always going to be valuable, even if I feel like the artwork was in it for me. So if you're feeling like that about your work, just remember that you can learn a lot about your own practice from the things that you do that are not successful in your own eyes. So uh, keep making, don't get discouraged, move forward. Thanks so much for being here. If you haven't yet subscribed, please subscribe to my channel. I make videos about art practice and running a business as a part-time artist and art instruction. I'm a certified art teacher. Until next time, happy drawing. Bye.